Welcome to Music in Progress, your window into the art of composing music. I'm your host, Michael Cook, a Bay Area composer and multi-instrumentalist. We'll delve into the depths of my creative processes that shape the music I make. Whether you're a fellow musician, an enthusiast, or simply curious about the magic behind the melodies, you'll find valuable insights, practical tips, and innovative techniques to inspire your own musical journey. Aspen Conference 2024, My Experience. In this post, I'm going to walk you through my experience attending the Aspen Composers Conference in 2024. Hopefully, this will help you decide if it's an event worth your time and money. Why I attended. My main goals for attending were networking, meet a lot of new composers. I'm always on the lookout for new composers to feature on my show. Trend spotting. I wanted to see what's currently trending in the world of composition beyond my usual circles. Learning. Gain some insight in composing. I didn't know. My talk aimed to share insights about circle music and to persuade others to explore this unique musical form. The application process. I applied rather late, at the end of June, and was accepted to present at the beginning of July, just a month before the conference. This meant I had to scramble to book a plane ticket and find accommodation at an affordable rate. Aspen is notorious for its high prices, even more so than the Bay Area. After some searching, I landed on the St. Moritz Lodge, where I secured a room with a shared bath, a hostel-style room, for $175 per night. If anyone knows of a more budget-friendly option, I'd love to hear about it. Preparing for the conference. I had some concerns about the setup for my presentation. At my local SF Composer meetups, we usually just plug in a device to a projector and go. Initially, I was told there wouldn't be a projector, which felt outdated. Luckily, closer to the event, I was informed that a projector would be available after all, much to my relief. Another aspect of the conference included a recital after the talks. Since piano is not an instrument I perform on, I decided to bring my flute, which is more travel-friendly, and composed a new piece specifically for the event. So, my July was packed with preparing my talk, creating a slideshow, and writing a new composition. The Friday before the conference, I received an email with the talk schedule and the name of the building where it would take place, but oddly, no address was provided. Additionally, there was no information about the recital scheduled for that evening. I have to admit, I was expecting more detailed communication, especially for a national conference. When I coordinate my orchestra, I make sure to provide comprehensive details in my emails, so this lack of information was surprising. Arriving in Aspen. I arrived in Aspen on Sunday evening. Transportation from the airport to my hotel, only about five miles away, was a bit tricky. Ride-sharing options seemed limited, but I was able to share a taxi with another solo traveler, though it still cost me $25. I got to the hotel just in time before the front desk closed, which was fortunate as I had some questions about local dining options. They also kindly lent me an umbrella, which was much appreciated as it was raining. Aspen is a charming but pricey town. I grabbed dinner at a local spot recommended by the hotel, Michola, where I had a memorable Colorado beer and a burrito, though I was shocked by the $39 bill. Aspen's food scene is definitely on the expensive side, and I might have been able to find more affordable options had I known where to look. The night was a bit rough, as my room was quite warm with no air conditioning, and being used to cooler Bay Area temperatures, I struggled to sleep in the nearly 80-degree heat, even with the window open. The Conference Day The next morning, after a complimentary breakfast at the hotel, I used Google Maps to find my way to the Red Brick Center. I managed to enter through a back door and wandered around bit before finding the right place. Upon arrival, I quickly realized the event was much smaller than anticipated. I was told to expect 20 to 25 composers, but it turned out to be just the presenters and a few significant others, around 10 people, which is close to the attendance at my local monthly composer meetups. The talks. I eagerly anticipated Dr. Smee Wong's opening talk, Mosaic Miniature, a composition for Chinese and Western instruments, given my keen interest in Chinese instruments and music. The presentation exceeded my expectations. Dr. Wong was commissioned to compose a piece for both Western and Chinese instruments, he decided to create two distinct ensembles. 
While both ensembles incorporated a blend of Western and Chinese instruments, one was uniquely tuned to explore microtones. This work stood out as one of the more experimental pieces presented at the conference. Although it won't be performed until next year, I'm excited to hear it. Dr. Corey Field, who as it turns out, knows the composer who inspired my talk, presented his own session titled Poems as Life Story Libretti. The talk was so rich in content that he nearly ran out of time. Field focused on two of his song cycles, one dedicated to Benjamin Britten and the other based on poems by County Cullen, a poet I hadn't encountered before. He spent considerable time detailing Britten's life, which, while informative, didn't provide much new information for me. When he finally discussed his piece, he had to rush through it somewhat, but the initial sections of the music made me feel as if I were listening to Britten himself. The music effectively mirrored the qualities of the subject. I was particularly interested in the second song cycle because Cullen was a new discovery for me. The music in this cycle, like this other, was very traditional and quasi-romantic. I believe these pieces would be ideal for ensembles hesitant to explore modern music, as they blend seamlessly with works from a century ago. Dr. Robert Strobel's talk on what I learned after interviewing musicians was another session that aligned with my reasons for attending the conference, and I was eager to hear it. The talk offered some valuable insights, particularly regarding composition competitions. Strobel highlighted that the best piece is not always the one selected and explored various reasons behind this. Personally, I've never been a fan of these competitions, as the rewards rarely justify the effort invested in composing, and there's always a risk that the judges may not appreciate your style. I prefer to create my own opportunities and opportunities for others, rather than relying on being chosen like the aliens in Toy Story. I have been chosen. Farewell, my friends. I go on to a better place. Gotcha. While Strobel's talk contained some useful points, it was somewhat hindered by being read verbatim, which made it a bit harder to follow and less engaging than it might have been. The next talk felt somewhat like a college presentation, as it focused on the work of a different composer rather than the speaker's own. Yuhan performed Russell Pinkston's Tailspin and shared insights she gained from both studying the piece with Pinkston and performing it. While the information was valuable, I personally would have preferred to hear more about her own compositions. At lunchtime, I headed down the hill to explore some nearby restaurants. Along the way, I ran into Smee and we decided to have lunch together at a Thai restaurant. It was a pleasure to chat with him and learn more about his work. I wish more composers had gathered for meals. It would have been great to share ideas and insights with each other. The first talk after lunch was Trickster Themes in Two Operas by Anthony Davis by Dr. John Forshee was one I was particularly looking forward to, given my admiration for Anthony Davis's music. However, I was concerned it might resemble a college presentation. While the talk did delve into how to find elements that deviate from traditional narratives or describe music in culturally appropriate ways, it unfortunately didn't cover much about Davis's work itself. John also discussed Elian Radig, who created all their music using a ARP 2500 modular synthesizer. John employed spectral analysis, compressing Radige music into shorter time frames to analyze the music's structure. I found this approach intriguing, but it didn't directly address the process behind creating the music itself. I believe theory should align with how music is composed rather than imposing pre-existing theories on it. Boo Schenkerian analysis. My talk, unfortunately, encountered some technical issues. I'm accustomed to using my USB-C to HDMI adapter to quickly connect my iPad to a projector or TV and be ready to go. However, the setup for this presentation was different. Dr. Forshee kindly lent me his adapter because I had the wrong type. I needed USB-C to female HDMI. Unfortunately, even with his setup, the audio wouldn't play through the TV or my iPad. Since I didn't have a headphone jack for external speakers like everyone else, the audio tracks were not heard. Thankfully, Dr. Forshee stepped in to assist by playing the videos from his laptop. My hero. Another issue was that my talk was originally designed as an online paper, intended to be accompanied by extended sections of music. 
Since I could only play short clips of the circle music pieces, it was challenging to convey the gradual changes inherent in this type of music. I should have anticipated this limitation. Additionally, the audience had thinned out by the time of my talk, resulting in a smaller group of listeners. However, if you're interested, you can read the full talk and listen to the complete music on my website. The next talk was one I was particularly excited about, titled Fantastic Creatures of the Mountains and Seas by Yang Fan Shu. I initially thought the work was based on the Chinese story of the same name, but it turns out it's inspired by it, with the composer creating her own original story. The piece is reminiscent of works like Peter and the Wolf and Carnival of the Animals, featuring a narrator who tells the story, with each magical creature represented by its own section or movement. I believe this piece could be a hit with orchestras, especially those looking to engage younger audiences. It offers opportunities for imaginative staging, such as having actors dress as the creatures, which could make the experience even more captivating, while also introducing elements of Chinese culture. I wish the new Juilliard Ensemble's performance, which was excellent, were available online for others to enjoy. The final talk of the day was presented by our host, Natalie Sinhavsky. Unfortunately, it only involved reading a paper about a large-scale opera she recently completed. Without the added engagement of a visual presentation, it was challenging to maintain my focus throughout the talk. The recital. The schedule ran a bit long overall, leaving us with only about an hour before the recital. Those of us performing walked over to the Aspen Community Church to warm up and do a sound check. The piano in the church was quite lovely, and there was also a piano in the basement, allowing two people to warm up simultaneously. Unfortunately, the recital was poorly attended. Only the composers showed up. It seems the event wasn't advertised alongside the other Aspen Music Festival activities and may not have been announced outside our small group. As a result, we performed for each other, featuring two premieres, one by Corey Field and one by myself. The recital was recorded, though I'm not sure if I'll receive a copy. I have to admit, it was a bit warm, and I wasn't feeling fully engaged during my performance. Although I had practiced seven-minute versions of the piece in my studio, I struggled to find the right groove and decided to cut the performance short. It's a more experimental work, so I wasn't certain how it would be received. To my surprise, several attendees complimented my flute playing and piece afterward, which was encouraging. The highlight of the day came as we were leaving when one of the composers expressed interest in writing a circle music piece. This was the primary goal I had hoped to achieve with my talk, so it was a gratifying moment. Coda, the journey home. My return trip was a bit of a disaster. After an early morning takeoff, the plane's landing gear malfunctioned and we had to make an emergency landing in Grand Junction. This led to a long day of waiting for a rescue plane, and I didn't get home until 5.30 p.m., much later than planned. The silver lining? The food prices in Grand Junction were much more reasonable. The costs? Here's a breakdown of my expenses for the trip. Plane tickets, 588.94 cents. Hotel, 389.55 taxis, $55 food, $86.64 is in Aspen, $22 in Grand Junction. Total, 1,120. Definitely not a cheap trip. Final thoughts. Whether or not the Aspen Composers Conference is worth attending depends on your goals. If you're looking to add a conference talk to your resume, this could be a good fit. However, if your aim is to network with a large number of composers or gain significant exposure, it might fall short. On the other hand, if you're looking for a more intimate setting with some lovely people and a fun trip, this conference could be perfect for you. There's definitely potential here especially if the conference could integrate more with the broader Aspen Music Festival activities and draw in a larger audience for the recital. Moving the application deadline up would also help out-of-town attendees secure cheaper flights and accommodations.